بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم uh, dear uh, colleagues I, am, I have the pleasure and the honor uh, to meet you again uh, in the second US Egypt after uh, the eighth US uh, course of uh, 19, 19 basic and advanced lectures of different uh, endosonographic uh, uh, subjects and techniques. Uh, and I have the pleasure and honor to meet you again in the second US Egypt with uh, very distinguished uh, international uh, figures uh, in US worldwide. Uh, we have with us uh, Professor Marc Giovannini uh, from Marseille, France, uh, Professor uh, Hakan Sintork from Istanbul, Turkey, uh, Professor uh, Mohammed Osman from uh, Baylor uh, University, uh, Texas, Houston, United States, and Professor uh, Kalpish Patel uh, from uh, also uh, Baylor University, uh, Texas, Houston. Uh, just few words in few seconds uh, by uh, our mentor and professor uh, Mazin Naga to welcome uh, you and our guests. Father Dr. Mazin. I'm very happy in the beginning of the second meeting of the Egyptian group of US. I'm happy to welcome our speakers from outside Egypt, Professor Mark Giovannini from France, Professor Hakan Santor from Turkai, Professor Mohammed Osman from USA, Professor Kalbesh Battle from USA, with all the Egyptian speakers and chairpersons as attendees, I hope you all a fruitful, successful meeting. It's my pleasure to ask Dr. Osman to introduce the first speaker, Professor Mark Juvenini. Thank you. Thank you. It would be my pleasure to uh, introduce uh, Professor Mark Juvenini. He is uh, um, one of the leaders of the AUS in the world. I remember uh, when I was an uh, Indiscovery Fellow, I would read his paper. Um, and it's really my honor to be uh, um, in the panel with him today introducing uh, his first lecture regarding uh, AUS guided uh, biliary drainage. Uh, before we start with also talking about all the effort of Dr. Giovannini on training um, uh, professors and doctors in the Middle East on the performance of AUS, and we truly appreciate all his help and we're looking forward um, to listen to his lecture now. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for this uh, very kind uh, introduction. And uh, for me, it's always a big pleasure to be uh, with uh, my friend uh, from, uh, from Egypt, from this uh, second uh, EUS-Egypt uh, 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 meeting. Unfortunately, the, the situation, uh, the sanitary situation is, uh, is difficult. And we hope that next year we will be, uh, we will be together in presential uh, uh, in Cairo for the, the, third, uh, the third meeting. Uh, my talk uh, this afternoon is uh, US guided biliary drainage. You know that it's a, a very uh, burning question today. What is the real place of uh, the US guided? Should the US guided will replace the RCP uh, in some indication? Uh, we, we, we will see the, uh, this during my, uh, my uh, lecture. Here you can see the, the three techniques uh, to, uh, to drain the, 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 bile, the biliary duct uh, uh, and the CBD using the US route. Uh, the, the first is the uh, choledocodiodenostomy, is the direct puncture of the CBD at the level of the bulbus or the genus superius. And with the introduction of uh, uh, a metallic stent, here you see this is a fully covered metallic stent, but we can use also now uh, uh, lamps, uh, spaxus or axio stent. The second is the uh, hepaticogastrostomy is mainly uh, used uh, in case of uh, altered uh, anatomy. And the goal is the direct puncture of the segment two or segment three bile duct uh, through the uh, small curvature of the stomach and uh, to introduce a, spe a special stent, which is this is the Jobor stent, which is a partially covered stent, 70% covered, 30% uncovered, to drain uh, the liver into the, the stomach. And the third technique is the anterograde stenting, is the same uh, access than the hepaticogastrostomy, but the stent is pushed uh, into the duodenum through the, uh, the, the, the papilla. Uh, this is uh, some video of uh, the uh, hepatico uh, cholidocodiodenostomy, and uh, here you see the the, the old technique using uh, uh, using the uh, 
uh, the uh, metallic stent, the uh, fully covered metallic stent with the first puncture with the with the needle and after using the cystostome, the introduction of a wire uh, and uh, uh, finally the uh, introduction of the, the stent into the, uh, the bulbous uh, to achieve the, uh, the uh, anastomosis uh, between the uh, CBD uh, and uh, the uh, duodenum. Here it's uh, a fully uh, covered uh, stent, a biliary uh, stent. But uh, uh, now we, uh, we prefer to, uh, to use uh, when the, the CBD is uh, um, very uh, dilated, more than uh, 12 uh, uh, millimeter. We, we prefer to, uh, to use the direct uh, and one step uh, uh, puncture uh, of, the, uh, of the CBD uh, using the uh, axios stent or the hot spaxus with the direct puncture. Uh, we need uh, to, to have a large uh, CBD and uh, to open the, uh, the, uh, the stent. Uh, and uh, you will see the why, because here we, we push with the catheter the, the, the wall of the stent, and here you see the, uh, the, uh, uh, the stent open uh, inside the, uh, the CBD. And uh, we have after the, uh, the opening of the stent uh, inside the, the duodenum with the, the bile is, uh, is coming. This is the technique of uh, trans uh, uh, anterograde stenting. And you see the, the stent is pushed uh, uh, through the, uh, uh, the, into the duodenum uh, uh, anterogradly. The, small, the, the trick is to know where is the, the, the papilla. And the small trick is just to open uh, the, the stent inside the duodenum and after to pull back the stent. And when you have the resistance, you are at the level of the, of the papilla and you can deploy uh, completely uh, the, uh, the, the stent like this. Here you see the, the opening of the stent step by step. You are with this, uh, uh, this technique. And uh, the last uh, technique is the, uh, the hepaticogastrostomy. And this is, a, this is a case of a patient uh, with uh, uh, a stenosis of the CBD. It was impossible to, uh, to cannulate due to a diverticula. And the patient has an external drain. And also, the, the stenosis was not possible to pass uh, percutaneously. And we decided to do uh, an hepaticogastrostomy. And you see, this is the, the puncture of the segment uh, two, I think, here. Uh, with the, the needle, even if the, uh, the ducts are not so dilated, we can inject contrast. And after we pass, uh, we pass a Y, you will see that the Y cannot uh, pass the stenosis. Uh, and uh, this was a very, very tight uh, stenosis due to a, a cholangiocarcinoma. And uh, we decided to do an hepaticogastrostomy to remove the external drain. This is the cystostom, the six French cystostom, which is very, very useful to create the, the anastomosis between the, uh, the duct and the stomach and the introduction of the Jobor stent. With the, uh, this is the junction between the, the uncovered part and the covered part. Now, uh, this is the, the, the first generation and we, we use 70% uh, covered and 30% uncovered. The uncovered part prevents the migration of the stent, and the covered part will prevent the bill, uh, the bill leakage. And here you see the, the complete uh, uh, opening of the, uh, of the stent. And you can see also endoscopically the opening of the stent, which is uh, very important to, uh, to have almost two or three centimeters of the stent inside the stomach. This is the, the, good, uh, the, the good distance, the good uh, uh, for the hepaticogastrostomy. What are the different clinical situations in which we, we use, uh, we can use the US BD? We have three situations, the malignant stenosis of the CBD, the benign stenosis, we will see that we have more and more uh, cases now to, and we use the, the, the US and malignant ELR structure, and you see that this, uh, this is quite a new indication uh, to use the, the US. 
malignant the stenosis of the CBD. You know that uh, this is a, a recent uh, meta-analysis, a systematic review of the safety of the choledocodiodenostomy. You see that uh, if you compare with the first paper uh, published uh, uh, um, during 10 years ago, the rate of uh, adverse event uh, uh, has decreased. It was around uh, the 30 percent during for the first paper. Now is uh, around of uh, 13 or 40 percent. You see that the, the main risk is always uh, the uh, bill leakage. But if you see on the subgroup analysis, the pull rate of adverse event with the use of lamps was lower than uh, if you use uh, a standard uh, uh, biliary stent. USBD versus PTBD, uh, now there is uh, no debate. Uh, if uh, the RCP fail, uh, the uh, first, uh, uh, second choice is the, uh, the USBD and not the PTBD. And this is one of the meta-analyses and they show that the USBD is associated with a better clinical success, fewer post-procedure adverse events, and also lower rate of reintervention. This is very uh, important. Safety of cholecholecholecholecholecholecholecholecholecholecholecholecholecholecholecholecholecholecholecholecholecholecholecholecholecholecholecholecholecholecholecholecholecholecholecholecholecholecholecholecholecholecholecholecholecholecholecholecholechol
And you see the, the CVD uh, is uh, not dilated because we are at distance of the, of the pancreatitis. And uh, we decide to, uh, to uh, do a direct puncture. And you see the position of the scope is different than for uh, the drainage for the choledocodiodenostomy in case of cancer. Uh, we, the, the goal is to pass the wire into the, the duodenum and not to go inside the, the liver. And here you see the direct puncture of, the, of the, this uh, uh, small, uh, uh, not dilated CBD. And after we inject contrast, of course, to be sure that uh, we are in a good direction. And uh, the, uh, less, the, less, the, the next step is the introduction of the Y and after to do uh, an exchange to remove the duodenoscope, the echoendoscope, and to pass a duodenoscope to, uh, to uh, do the RCP and the sphincterotomy. And here you see the, the opacification and now the, we introduce the, the wire and the wire will, will pace, pace, will go into the, into the duodenum. Ah, I'm sorry, what happened? Uh, I, don't know, I don't know if something was wrong in the video here. Okay, I don't know. We don't see the, this, this video is uh, it's not working. I don't know why. Okay, anyway. There is a few papers uh, in the literature about uh, the use of uh, the US for the uh, benign uh, for the benign disease. Uh, there is two paper, one from Japan and one from your unit, and we used uh, the US route in benign uh, biliary structure in patient, mainly in patient with altered anatomy. And you see uh, uh, 17 of the 26 patients for the, the Ogura uh, paper and uh, all the patients for our uh, uh, or uh, study. With uh, quite a good uh, success, I will show you two types of uh, benign stenosis. This is a, a post-operative uh, uh, stenosis uh, uh, of the hepaticojejunal uh, uh, hepatico anastomosis after a Whipple resection for a benign cystic lesion of the, the head of the pancreas. And the patient uh, develops recurrent cholangitis. Mainly in this case, the ducts are not so dilated. And you see the first step is to perform an hepaticogastrostomy uh, with a, a fully covered stent. And we leave in place a double pigtail. Uh, and after we remove, uh, after uh, one week, we remove the metallic stent and we have a, a direct passage uh, of the, uh, into the left, uh, the left lobe and we can insert through the, uh, the, the, uh, the anastomosis uh, pigtail. Uh, and here you see we have a three a pigtail stent of seven French, 10 centimeter, to do the calibration of this uh, anastomosis. And we perform this uh, procedure from one year. We exchange three times uh, the, the three stents. And this is another case. It's a patient with a gastrectomy and uh, a large CBD stone. And you see the same uh, technique. The first step is the to perform hepaticogastrostomy with a fully covered metallic stent. This stent is after uh, one uh, or two weeks removed. We have after a direct access of the bile duct. Here you see the, uh, the spyglass. We, can, uh, we pass the spyglass. We do a, a sphincteroclasi uh, with, uh, uh, to open the, the, the papilla because this patient has a normal uh, bile duct anatomy. Uh, and after, with the uh, with the spyglass, we can uh, uh, we can uh, uh, break uh, break the, the 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 stone using uh, the uh, the lithotrichy, uh, and we uh, finally uh, you see the all the stone has completely disappeared, and we leave for one or two months uh, a double pigtail stent, and we remove after to be sure that uh, the clearance of the duct was uh, was obtained, and this is a. Uh, the, the use, and we use more and more often uh, this uh, technique for uh, benign uh, stenosis. And finally, the third part is the malignant ELR structure. The question is how to drain the right lobe with the US. Uh, we can uh, use the 
mainly we use the, the for class king uh, the uh, the us to drain the left lobe when the left lobe is not possible to drain endoscopically like in this case and we have the patient is drained the right lobe is drained uh, endoscopically and the left uh, with the uh, the us this is a very complex class king type 4 with three stent uh, inserted endoscopically and the left uh, drain uh, using the US root. And you see this uh, with the four stand, one, two, three, and four, for this very complex uh, ILAR, uh, ILAR cancer. It's very important to have a complete drainage of uh, this patient, because if you want to treat this patient by chemotherapy or radiochemotherapy, you need to have a complete drainage as possible, because if you leave uh, one or two segments not drained, you have a high risk that the patient developed during the chemotherapy, uh, cholangitis or hepatic abscess. And here you, are, you see also uh, this very complex drainage with uh, three stents uh, in the right lobe and two hepaticogastrostomy because the segment two and three were separated by the tumor uh, for, this, uh, uh, for this patient. Or this kind also of a drainage with uh, four stents uh this the use of us we, we will push uh, the, the 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 possibility of the complete drainage uh of patient even with uh, uh, type 4 uh without the to to perform ptc and of to uh, to drain the right lobe and you have uh, two technique or the hepaticoduodenostomy which is a very difficult technique and i did only one time uh, in my experience and I use, uh, I prefer to use the bridging, uh, the bridging uh, technique. I will show you the, this, uh, this uh, uh, technique. Uh, this is a, a patient with, with a type two uh, ILR cancer. It was a, a, a patient with a gastrectomy and uh, he developed a metastasis uh, at the level of the, uh, of the ilum. And uh, here you see the, the left uh, lobe uh, with the dilated duct. And the first step is like the, the hepatico uh, gastrostomy. You see, you will see the, the injection of contrast. Here, and uh, after the, uh, we uh, introduce the, uh, the cystostome. And the cystostome is very, very important in this, uh, uh, for this technique, because we can use after like uh, like a catheter and you will see that we exchange the the, the wire for uh, uh, an angulated wire and the goal is to try not to go to into the 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 the, the, call it the cbd but to go in the right lobe and with the manipulation of the wire it's possible to pass inside the right lobe and after with the cystostome we create a channel using the pure cutting current a channel through the tumor and we insert deeply the cystostome in the right uh, uh, in the right lobe. Of course, we can also inject by the cystostome, which is very useful. And we uh, are sure that the we are in a good position. Here you see the contrast filling the right uh, duct. And the and here you see the stenosis. The next step is to uh, delay, to do a dilation of this uh, stenosing, stenosis using a balloon. This is a four millimeter balloon. You can use a six millimeter. It's not no. And after we insert the first stent, the first stent is an uncovered stent of four or six centimeters. This depends on the, the anatomy of the patient. And uh, the, the, the goal of this stent is to do uh, a communication between the right lobe and the left lobe. And here you see the, the opening of the stent. And you understand that after we will insert a, a, a geobor stent to do a communication of the left into the stomach. And we, we will have a complete drainage uh, of the, the right lobe into the left lobe and the left lobe into the stomach using uh, only uh, the uh, US, uh, the US route. And here you see the insertion of the of the geobor stent. 
And this is the opening of the Jobos tent, and I will show you the, the final results. Of course, we in this case, we will leave a, a nasobiliary drain just uh, to, uh, to protect. And this is the final results. You see, with the right lobe is draining into the left and the left into the stomach. There is a few uh, paper in the literature again, Ogura from uh, Japan. Uh, uh, this, this is from uh, States and uh, or paper of, of 12 patients. And you see that the, uh, the clinical success is around 80%. And you see the morbidity is, uh, uh, is a little bit higher than the standard uh, hepaticogastrostomy. But why is it important to try to, uh, to, to drain uh, completely as possible this malignant stenosis? And this is a, a paper from Oronit, and I will finish my presentation with this paper. It was a first, uh, 60 patient, and you see with a malignant stenosis. Uh, or cholangiocarcinoma or metastasis from colon cancer or breast cancer. And you see that if we drain, if we succeed to drain more than 80% of the liver, we have a, a better survival rate of the patient. And also 73% of this patient can receive a second treatment, can receive a, a chemotherapy or a radiotherapy. And this is important for patients uh, with breast cancer or colon cancer. And you see that we we will use for this the, the combination of the of the, the, the technique EUS, ERCP plus EUS, ERCP plus PTBD, or ERCP, PTBD, and EUS. This is uh, our, uh, my, quite my conclusion uh, today. If you have a failure of RCP, if the duodenal lumen is intact, we perform a choledoco duodenostomy or an anterograde stenting. If we have a duodenal obstruction of an altered anatomy, we go directly to the hepatico uh, gastrostomy. And uh, if uh, the, the situation, the sanitary situation will be better, I hope to uh, see you uh, next year uh, in uh, Marseille and Aix-en-Provence for uh, our EUS uh, international uh, meeting. Thank you very much for your attention. Well, thank you. That's a very great lecture. And we have a question from the audience. It's asking in the hepatico uh, gastrogenosum, which segment of the liver you choose and how you locate it? And, and that's a question we get a lot. How, uh -huh. how do you determine where you puncture? I prefer to target the segment three because uh, we are uh, lower in the, in the stomach and there is no risk uh, because sometimes with the segment two the, is a very high and we are too close to the oesophagus junction and the, there is the risk to do the puncture through the oesophagus and uh, with uh, sometimes complication uh, uh, as a mediastinitis and uh, uh, and also it's easier if you want to come back to, uh, in case of obstruction of the hepatico gastrostomy, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, if the, 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 if the gastrostomy, the hepatico gastrostomy is uh, in the segment three. Uh, segment three, it's, uh, it's easier when you, you're, you, you see the, 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 left, uh, uh, the, the left lobe. Uh, the, the first segment that you see, it's a segment two. Uh, you need to push the, the scope straight and the, the, when you see the, 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 uh, the second duct dilated is the segment three. And I think it's, uh, uh, and you are approximately at 55, 50 centimeter uh, of the dental arch. If you are at 45, 40, you are too close to the gastric junction and there is a, it's a risky, it's more risky. Sometimes you have no option, eh? but uh, if you have the, 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 the option, it's better to target the segment three. That's very great advice, and I think it's very helpful for a lot of us. We also have a question regarding Kodako de Duanastomy. Uh, what is the diameter of lumen opposing metal stent? Are you 10 millimeter. 
in the United States, the smallest available is 10, 10 millimeter. 10 millimeter, and sometimes yeah. we notice we have problem with it. Yeah. But the problem is the, it's not the size of the stent <laughs> because 10 is, is enough. Uh, even eight will be, will be enough. It is the size of, of, of the duct. And also, uh, or, uh, because, uh, and also the, if the tumor is too big, you are too close to the, to the hilum. And uh, I think it's for the reason that sometimes we, we, we should use a standard uh, biliary stent. Uh, but mainly the best indication of the, of the cholidocodiodenostomy uh, is the, uh, the ampullary lesion when you have uh, or the, the pancreatic cancer developing the incinate process that uh, you, you have, uh, you have uh, a lot of uh, CBD and, uh, and large CBD. But we need to have more than 12 millimeter. 12 millimeter is the 12, 13 millimeter. If, if not, you are not too much space to, to open the, 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 the lamps. So another question regarding how much is the length of covered stent you keep in the stomach? That's uh, referring to hepatic gojejunostomy. I think the, 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 I prefer to have, to have, I use always the 10 centimeter, even if it's too long, I prefer to have a long part into the stomach uh, because the, the, if it's too long, you can after cut with the, 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 the argon beam, but if it's too short, uh, with the movement of the, the, the of the stomach, even if you have a, a large flange, you have a risk of, of migration. And when when um, when I leave uh, less than three or uh, three three centimeter, I prefer to to insert a second stent, a fully covered stent, to uh, to have a longer part into the into the stomach. I have a question. Pardon? Yeah, I was just saying, any other question from our panel? Uh, yes, yes, I have a question. I have a question, two questions. Uh, Professor Max Giovannini, uh, you are telling us that you can apply lambs uh, in uh, uh, cholerico didionostomy. Uh, do you try different types of lambs and you prefer uh, one over each other, like Axios, Spaxios, Nagy, or uh, that of micro no, no, I use, I use uh, both. Uh, no, na Nagi is not, uh, is not, uh, you have a high risk of migration with the Nagi, uh, I think. Uh, I, I use the, 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 the Axios and the Spaxus. There is, a, for, for me, there is no, there is no difference. The miners prefer the Spaxus because they manipulate. Uh, yeah. But uh, I think the, for me, there is no difference. There is no difference. Yes. Uh, another question, please. Uh, during uh, a guided rendezvous uh, from the bulb of the duodenum, uh, sometimes the, the echoendoscope uh, takes the G-shape uh, position and mm -hmm. the wire is always going up. Is there any tricks uh, to direct the wire down, uh, mm -hmm. uh, for example, by the positioning of the echoendoscope or any type of wire, or you can turn it colloidico uh, duodenostomy instead of rendezvous? What is your situation? What is your what you do? I, 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 I do I, I do the rendezvous only for benign stenosis. I I, I never mm. do rendezvous for for malignant stenosis because yeah. it's a mess. And you agree there is a there is a paper that they show more uh, complication uh, in the rendezvous technique because uh, than the than the. Uh, the the direct puncture, uh, I think the, the 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 direct puncture. No, I have no 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 trick and the the uh, the, the the trick is to insert a lot of a lot of wire <laughs> and uh, uh, after when when you exchange the when you exchange the the lot, there is a one one trick I did one time is. Uh, uh, to pass a, a very a small uh, six French na na naso uh, biliary uh, uh, drain uh, and uh, on on the wire to 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 and to and because the, with the the naso biliary drain it's more rigid and you have no risk of uh, to uh, to uh, than the scope uh, and it was easier uh, to to uh, to. Um, uh, to catch again the the the, the wire in in a, in a good position, but I have no trick, no particular trick for the for the rendezvous. I did 
very very few rendezvous only uh, the, the the case like I, like i show you uh, during the, the my, my presentation is uh, it's one or two per year maximum i prefer yes. the, the direct puncture yes but any type of wire in this situation uh, 0 0.25 0 0.35 a special wire from uh, or 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 you are trying the, the usual wire the usual jack wire no, I, now I, I like to use the 25, the, the new revolution uh, wire, uh, Jaguar, uh, because he has the same, uh, the same uh, rigidity uh, than the, the 35, but is uh, smaller. And uh, uh, I, I like to use, uh, to use this wire for uh, every kind of uh, US, uh, US guided uh, procedure and pancreas or, or bile duct. From which company, please? Is the Boston is the same? Is the, is the Revolution? The name is uh, Revolution Jaguar. Revolution Jaguar. Yes. Thank you. Osman. Uh, we do have another question. Yes, from, Dr. Osman. Uh, one of the audience. Yes. Let's say, do you use double big tails plastic stent within your metallic stent to prevent migration? Alors. Yes, I, I, I used during many years the, uh, all the nasobiliary drain or the double pigtail, but uh, now I stopped. Now I stopped because uh, I think this, this doesn't prevent the, the, the migration finally. And uh, uh, when I had the migration, I, I, I saw that the pigtail was in the stomach but the, the metallic stent was into the peritoneum. The patient has, has a big leakage, <laughs> uh, even with the pigtail. And uh, uh, it was not possible to recannulate, to pass. A, uh, not, I think there is no advantage to, to, to leave the pigtail. And uh, if you leave the pigtail and uh, uh, if uh, the, the, the you you, I, I'm sure that uh, the, the, the pigtail, you, you should remove after the pigtail, because if you leave the pigtail, this increase the risk of obstruction of the, uh, of the stent. For the, now, uh, during, the, the, during the last year, I stopped and there is no, no difference. Uh, it was more for the, 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 the because the, we are anxious that we put the pigtail down, uh, the, there is no, no, real, uh, no real interest. It's different than for the, the pseudocyst drainage. And this is uh, this different. Now, what I see is uh, one thing in hepaticogastrostomy is the, the candy sign. I think the, the candy sign is uh, uh, when the stent is uh, normal and there is the, the a bumping like this and after normal. This is um, the sign that the stomach is separator of the of the liver and the part of the stent is inside the peritoneum like this. Mm -hmm. And if you have this candy sign, you have a high risk that the patient, the, the stent will migrate. And for this reason that at the, at the end of the procedure, if you have this candy sign like this, it's better to insert a, a second stent inside, a fully covered stent, a long fully covered stent, and this prevent the, the, the complication. This is very, very important, the, the, the candy sign for the hepaticogastrostomy. Uh, last question, uh, another question. Uh, some uh, uh, of our colleagues uh, apply uh, pigtail plastic stents in whether in uh, hepaticogastrostomy or mm -hmm. cholodicodidinosomy only, not, not, not inside a metal stent, just a plastic stent. Ah, just a plastic uh, stent. Yes, due this to is an economic problem. Uh, mm. Is there a place for this uh, nowadays? No, I have discussed because the Japanese do this. Uh, they have a special uh, pigtail stent for for the. And I have discussed with uh, Takao Itoi uh, it, uh, about. Uh, and for me, it's difficult to to understand um, uh, with uh, just uh, uh, seven French or eight French. Stent, we have to drain uh, completely, and uh, uh, the, the 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 bile duct. For uh, for me, it's difficult to uh, to 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 understand uh, for malignant disease uh, to use uh, to use. And I think 
it's probably in my first experience when I start uh, hepaticogastrostomy uh, 20 years ago now the the plastic stent we we have more uh, we have more uh, risk of bill leakage than uh, using the metallic stent I don't yes. recommend the plastic stent huh? but I know that there is uh, the, 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 there is a uh, there is a series from Japan uh, using uh, using a plastic stent with a good results yes Yes, thank you. Another uh, question regarding your experience uh, in the pancreas. Yeah. Accessing the pancreas through the stomach. Mm -hmm. uh, is it harder? Is it higher risk of pancreatitis? Should we avoid doing this kind of procedure or? No, 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 because the, the, the indication is, is the indication. The, today, what are the indication of uh, US uh, guided pancreatic uh, duct drainage is uh, you have two, two indications. The first is chronic pancreatitis in which your RCP fail, uh, or patient with a disconnected uh, duct syndrome, also they are mainly pancreatitis, uh, or the disconnected part is as a, a, an obstructive pancreatitis, and the risk to develop pancreatitis is very, is very low. And the, the, the other indication is the stenosis after Whipple. And also the patient, the, 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 they have a recurrent pancreatitis, and uh, they have a, a, an obstructive pancreatitis. Uh, the risk of pancreatitis is not is not uh, not very is not very important, and uh, uh, I, I think we, uh, we we can do this. Uh, we can do this because there is not not other option to operate the patient. It's not a good option for 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 this patient, uh, and um, but the drainage. Uh, is uh, with the US could be de definitive if you can insert two, two stents in parallel, the first stent with the US and one month or two months after a second stent in parallel, 50% of these patients need uh, no, no need uh, more, uh, more intervention. You can leave the patient like this for life. They develop an internal fistula, uh, an internal pancreatic fistula and uh, and the other 50 percent, you you need to to exchange because the, the they develop uh, uh, recurrent pain. But uh, the pancreatitis is not the problem. The problem is if you fail, you 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 develop a correction, and you, you need to treat after the collection. And uh, but this is uh, the the main complication that I had is is uh, is a collection is not pancreatitis, because the, the pancreas that we treat is a fibrous pancreas. Mm -hmm. And do you have a minimum of uh, that diameter? A pancreatic diameter? Ah, yes, yes, yes. You need the minimum uh, minimum size is, uh, for me, is a six millimeter, seven millimeter. Uh, uh, if not, uh, but if you have, uh, this is not dilated, this, the, 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 the pain is not due to the, to the obstruction, it's due to uh, inflammation or uh, other, uh, uh, another cause. Well, thank you so much. This was very informative. We truly enjoyed it.